So hey guys, this is your favorite fiction domain. So in this video, we will see what if Naruto was creepy snake god. But before we start, remember to subscribe and like this video. Now let's start. The battle was over. The fourth Hokage, Lord Minato Kamikaze had just sealed away Kayubi no Kitsune, the world's strongest biju, WH. O's name was enough to stir fear in a cage. And where had he sealed it? Right into his son, Uzumaki Naruto. The boy lay on the ground, sleeping, twitching every now and then, trying to control the tailed beast. His mother lay next to him, blood spilling from her mouth. She was dead, and so was Konoha's yellow flash. A man with orange hair and random piercings everywhere so he could look cool picked up the small child. Next to him a random woman started folding and unfolding a random paper crane for absolutely no fucking reason. He's the one, said the man. He will be of great importance to us. Are you sure, Nagato? Asked the woman. Nagato opened his mouth to answer, but was cut off when he saw a shuriken shooting towards them. Their source was an old man dressed in black armor, with a look of pure fury on his face. I won't let you take Naruto, he screamed. As the shuriken whirled towards Nagato, he lifted his arm and said, Shinra Tensai, Al might push lol, that sounds wrong. Th. E third Hokage and his shuriken went sailing back through the village. Zetsu, called Nagato. Yes, sir, take us back to base. You've got to be kidding. No Sasori, this is not a joke. Seriously, what does a badass criminal like me have to do with a stupid kid? This is not an ordinary kid. He is the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi. Kukukukuku, what fun we can have together. Orochimaru, wipe that creepy ass smile off your face. You ugly snake. Kakuzu, would you care to fucking repeat what you just said? Both of you shut the fuck up. What are you going to call him? Asked Kisame. Nagato thought for a while. How about Uzumaki Yahiko? Swords, puppets, and snakes. It had been four years since Pain had kidnapped, or as he considered it, adopted, Yahiko. Yahiko was still quite small. And everyone was at least twice his height, Kisame was three times his height. His life had been fun so far, he liked everyone in the Akatsuki, except Orochimaru, the creepy creep. All of them pretended they disliked him, except Conan, who had always wanted a child, but could not find anyone to fuck. But the truth was they all liked him, and showed their affections in different ways. Payne got him cake once a month, Kisame put on a shark show for him, Sasori put on a puppetry show for him, not with his actual puppets, that would give Orochimaru nightmares. Then it happened. One day, a random man tried to stab Yahiko. It was one of Hanzo's, buddies, aka slaves. The man swung his katana randomly and started chasing after Yahiko. Luckily Zetsu saw what was happening and ate the man while he was running. After the incident, all the Akatsuki unanimously agreed that Yahiko needed lessons. They also decided that Yahiko was a stupid name, and he should be called something different. Dango said Orochimaru, let's call him Dango, Bob, said Sasori, at which everyone looked at him, what, he said, it is cool to say Bob, money, said Kakuzu, what the fuck are these idiots saying, though Conan, maybe, said Zetsu, we should call him what his parents named him, Naruto, isn't Naruto a food, asked Orochimaru's partner, who no one cares about, he got ignored, Naruto's training began the next day, First up was Kenjutsu, sword stuff, with Kisame. Kisame picked up his sword Samahata, and said to Naruto. This is a sword, no duh, commented Zetsu. Fuck off. Kisame handed Naruto a long, thin, sword, which was twice his height. Kisame-sama, I think this is too big for me. No duh, commented Zetsu. Fuck off. Kisame handed Naruto a shorter sword, and they began training. First. Kisame had Naruto swing the sword around in a circle for a half hour to improve his arm strength. After a bunch of stabbing Zetsu clone exercises, Kisame created a water clone, and said, Naruto, fight this. Hit it once, and you win. The water clone swung the fake Samahata at Naruto, who managed to duck just in time. He tried to stab the clone, but it blocked and kicked Naruto in the face. It slashed at Naruto in the air, who managed to block, then, he accidentally dropped his sword on the clone. 
The clone who did not expect that exploded in a spray of water. Kisame smiled, if you could call it that, and said. Go see Sasori, he has a puppetry lesson for you. Naruto proudly raced to see Sasori. Sasori was dyeing his floor red with the blood of white Zetsu clones. Hey, Satori Nisan, what are you doing? Hi Naruto, I'm doing a little interior decoration. Let's start the lesson. First things first, what do you know about puppets and puppeteers? Asked Sasori. Naruto raised his hand. Sasori sighed. Naruto you don't need to raise your hand. You are the only student here. Oh, okay. I know all the puppeteers come from the hidden sand, and you are the best. Correct, smiled Sasori. Now today, I will teach you how to make your own puppets. You must know how to this, because that is the only way your puppets will be personalized. Naruto stuck a bunch of wood together, to make a shape that looked like a paper crane. He attached some wings to it, and stuck random swords and shuriken everywhere. He then stuck two kanai in the eyes. I call him, Suru. Um, okay, now battle my own invention. Tora, Sasori attached strings to Tora, and sent it at Naruto. Naruto got tangled up in the strings, and Suru randomly spun, and sent kanai everywhere. Tora spat, out shuriken that struck Suru in just the right areas, and the bird collapsed. Ah, said Naruto. Um, that was pretty good, said Sasori. Now go along to Orochimaru for your ninjutsu training. But, Orochimaru is a creepy gay pervert, whined Naruto. I know, but he is the best at ninjutsu out of all of us. Naruto slowly trudged along to Orochimaru's laboratory. On the wall, there were the hearts of random people, and Orochimaru was feeding someone's liver to his snakes. Ah, hello, Naruto-kun. Kukukukukukukukukuku. What the actual fuck is this guy? Thought Naruto fearfully. Ninjutsu is the strongest of the ninja arts. And it is none other than I, Orochimaru, the snake sage of the Sanin who will teach you. Kukukukukuku. Why does he end every sentence with kukukukukuku? Thought Naruto. First, we will practice chakra control, which is key to all techniques of ninjutsu. You will climb up that tree in the garden, using just your feet. You must maintain perfect constant chakra. Too much, and you will be rejected from the surface. Too little, and you won't hang on. Kukukukukukukukuku. And so began Naruto's chakra control exercises. He spent about 45 minutes practicing the tree exercise. And finally completed it. Well done Naruto-kun. Hissed Orochimaru. Now, my snakes will pursue around this garden. Try and escape from them. Have fun. Kukukukukukukuku. Orochimaru. Left the garden and Naruto sighed in relief. His relief was however, short-lived. A large snake came out and hissed. My name is Manda Bitch, and I'm here to eat you. Fuck you Orochimaru screamed naruto more snakes and a new member after a grueling session of evading orochimaru's goddamn snake naruto was ready to collapse luckily lunch was next and naruto was hangry angry because of a snake lover and hungry because of the said snake lover's pet snake naruto sat down at the long table reserved for members of the akatsuki others came in kisame swinging his sword conan riding a really big paper crane Orochimaru popping out of a snake's mouth, Sasori riding a puppet banana, why a banana? I don't know, dinner is served, said White Zetsu, singing as he placed platters of food on the table. Um, White Zetsu, it's fucking lunch time, bitch. Stop embarrassing us, screamed Black Zetsu, I like Dango, said Kakuzu randomly. Then, he blushed when he realized everyone was looking at him. Pain cleared his throat, let us beg. He stopped when he noticed Sasori already eating. Sasori looked up. What? Payne shook his head, and finished his speech. There is a time for conversation, but it is not now. Tuck in. Um, Payne, began Kisame. You're not motherfucking Dumbledore. Payne began crying. Harry Potter was so good. But then Dumbledore died. Why are these people so weird? Thought Samahata to itself. Hey Payne, screamed Naruto. What is my next lesson? Pain glowered at Naruto, history of the shinobi world, I'm the teacher, let's go, before the creation of the shinobi villages, all clans were separate factions, daimyos and lords hired clans to fight their enemies, of these clans, two were the strongest, the senju clan of the forest, and the uchiha clan of the mirror wheel eye, 
Whenever one lord hired one of those clans, the rival lord hired the other clan. There was great bloodshed between the two clans. But a friendship ended all of that. The two friends were Hashirama Senju, Shodai Hokage, and Uchiha Madara. Their friendship led to an alliance between Senju and Uchiha, which led to the formation of the village hidden in the leaves, Kanahagakur. Hain said the word, Kanahagakur, with distaste in his voice. But it was understandable, his life had been destroyed by a war waged by the hidden leaf. Of course, since Naruto was a kid, he didn't realize Pain's pain. Next class, you will have a quiz, said Pain. Naruto's face fell, and he said, fuck. Run along to Orochimaru, he will teach you taijutsu. Double fuck. Ah, Naruto-kun, good to see you again. Kukukukukuku, Naruto just glared at him. Now, I will be teaching you taijutsu. Specifically, the hubby style, also known as the serpent style. Let me demonstrate. Zetsu clone, come at me, bitch. Kukukukukukuku, Zetsu clone one charged at Orochimaru from the front. Zetsu clone 2 came from the back, and Zetsu clone 3 charged from his right flank. Orochimaru sort of wrapped his body around their weapons resulting in two clones to stab each other. Then, he took down the last clone with a quick kick to the face. The hubby style involves snaking yourself around weapons and attacks, and with quick kicks and jabs. Kukukukukukukuku, Orochimaru corrected Naruto's stance, and Naruto shuddered at the snakefucker's touch. Eventually, he got the stance, and began practicing his coup. NCHES and kicks as fast and as lethal as he could. At the end of the lesson, Orochimaru set a Zetsu clone after Naruto. The clone came at him with a right-handed hand chop. Naruto blocked, and kicked the clone in the balls. Immediately, he fell to the ground roaring in pain. Orochimaru laughed, then dismissed Naruto for his lesson with Konan, which was origami, since she said, a little boy shouldn't be exposed to so much violence. Assholes, origami will let him embrace his inner paper. I'm not going to explain that lesson, so sorry if you wanted to learn to fold a paper crane. Two years later, at an Akatsuki meeting, Payne cleared his throat, attention fellow s rank criminals. We are here to welcome a new member, and also have some good news. All the Uchiha clan have been slaughtered. Now Konoha is powerless. But before we celebrate, Let's introduce ourselves to our new member. Hi, I'm Pain, and I like causing pain. Hi, I'm Orochimaru, and I like experimenting on people. Kukukukukuku. Hi, I'm Sasori, and I like dyeing the sand red with my enemy's blood. Hi, I'm Kakuzu, and I like money. Hi, I'm Kisame, and I like slice people to bits with my friend Samahata. Also, I will be your new partner. Hi, I'm Conan, and I like origami. Hi, I'm Zetsu, and I like eating people. Pain asked, What's your name, kid? Uchiha, Itachi, S rank mission. Over the years, Naruto B. Gone learning more about other things from Itachi, such as Genjutsu and the Blitz Kick Taijutsu. Over, time Naruto became proficient in all his subjects, from Kenjutsu to puppetry to origami. He discovered his ninjutsu affinities were wind, fire, and lightning. He had learned several other techniques as well including several doppelganger techniques, and some invented by Itachi. The only subject, he was still struggling with was history. Naruto got every question wrong. For example, name the three great shinobi of the leaf. Answer. Orochimaru, Itachi, Zetsu. Name the five great shinobi villages. Answer. Takigakur, Uzioshigakur, Kusagakur, Odogakur, and Omegakur. As you can see, Naruto completely failed all his tests and got a zero. Except for one time, his answers were so stupid, that he somehow got minus 5%. But, in all other subjects, Naruto was acing them. Thus, the Akatsuki decided he was ready for a mission. An S-rank mission. Okay, Naruto, said Pain. You have a mission, really, asked Naruto, grinning. He had been pestering Pain for years for a mission, but all of them were too hard. It's S rank, so be careful. You are going to invade Nami no Kuni, Land of Waves, and assassinate Gato. A tyrant who was destroying the lives of people there. Pain snarled. Why is it S rank? Asked Naruto. It was Kisame who spoke this time. There are several Nukenon hired by Gato. And, 
One of them is a member of Kiri no Shinobi Gatana Shichinen Shu, Seven Ninja Swordsmen of the Mist. Raiga Kurosuki, wielder of the twin blades Kiba. Thus, we have given you a partner. He will observe you on your mission. It is. Drum roll, please. Everyone at the table began drumming the table loudly. Quote ellipsis dot. Zetsu. But WTF. Zetsu can't fight. Screamed Naruto, horrified. Yeah, that's why I'm sending him. Said Pain. He's good at infiltration, spying. Yeah, bitch. Said Zetsu. Okay, let's go. Screamed Naruto. Geez, why does this kid go from horrified to excited in five seconds? Thought Itachi. Zetsu and Naruto set off to Nami no Kuni, unaware of the criminal they would meet there. After a week of travels, Naruto and Zetsu came upon an onsen, and saw a dangerous criminal with white spiky hair peeking at bathing women. The man was chuckling to himself, as he wrote in a book. Zetsu, whispered Naruto, isn't that the book, Sasori was reading. Aika Aika, yup, stop that perverted criminal, excuse me, said Naruto. The man turned around and Naruto finished his hand seals. Orok no Jutsu, Sexy Jutsu. He turned into a super sexy naked woman, and the author of Ika Ika fainted from a really big nosebleed. If I'm not mistaken, that's Jiraiya the Toad Sage of the Sanin, said Zetsu. Let's rob him, goddamn pervert, muttered Naruto, as he took a bunch of Jiraiya's scrolls. Zetsu split into two, and White Zetsu took the scrolls back to MT. Akatsuki, their secret hideout. Somehow no one realized that was where they were living, despite the obvious name. Pain looked through. GH the scrolls White Zetsu had gotten from Jiraiya. They were useful. Horishin scroll, Rasengan scroll, Toad summoning scroll, Konoha's patrol roots, and most importantly, a copy of the next Aika Aika, which Sasori stole immediately. Yes, he and his puppets screamed. Naruto went into wave, pretending to be an orphan which wasn't hard, since technically he was an orphan. He knew the Akatsuki had taken him after his parents died, but he didn't hold any grudges. The Akatsuki, no matter how evil they thought themselves, had taken good care of him. Pushing away the thoughts, Naruto walked towards Gato's mansion, and saw how evil Gato was. Poor orphans ran around in the streets, so thin you could see their bones. A man was beating a woman, and no one gave a fuck. It's because of Gato. An old man whispered to him. He destroyed our once prosperous country. Naruto turned and asked the man the first thing that came to his mind. What's your name? My name is Tazuna. I am a bridge builder. Nami no Kuni was a very powerful nation at one time, for we held one of the strongest hidden ninja villages. Uzuyoshigakur, the village hidden in the whirlpools. Naruto looked at Tazuna quizzically, and the old man continued. The village had one of the four great clans of the ninja world. The Uzumaki. They were feared for their badass sealing techniques. In fact, ninja were so scared of them. That it took three great shinobi nations to defeat them. Iwa, Suna, Kiri teamed up on them, and so many ninja died. That's why Kiri and Suna are so weak today. Naruto walked away contemplating what he had learned. He had never known he was part of the strongest clans. He was so focused that he didn't notice the gray-haired man who was hiding a Sharingan behind a leaf forehead protector. Nar, Yuto quickly slit the necks of the two sentries at the front with his kunai. They both fell to the floor, but Naruto was already gone. Bahodo was 19 when he had come into Gato's bodyguard entourage. He was still 19, but had been promoted to Gato's elite bodyguard. His soldiers were supposed to be the strongest. So he was a little surprised when a random blonde 12 year old started beating the shit out of his soldiers. Defensive formation. He yelled. Immediately, the soldiers surrounded Bahodo and the door to Gato's room. With a sigh, the kid vanished and reappeared behind Bahodo and stabbed him in the back. Bahodo howled in pain, and his soldiers turned around and tried to stab the kid, who exploded in a blast of smoke. Then most of the soldiers got stabbed in the back with katana from a bunch of clones. Naruto teleported into Gato's room, and saw the fatso sleeping in bed. Rage filled Naruto, as he lifted his katana, and tried to stab Gato. But, he shunshined out of the way, as lightning hit where he was before. Hello Uzumaki. Hissed Raiga Kurosuki. The stupid joke and leaf ninja. Nice to beat you. Sneered Raiga. 
Naruto looked at Raiga. Raiga looked at Naruto. Naruto looked back. Raiga cleared his throat. This is the part where you start laughing at my joke. What joke? The one I just made. You made a joke. Yeah, really. Yeah, idiot. Nice to beat you. That was my joke. Quote ellipsis quote. Start laughing, bitch. Snarled Raiga. Why? Because I made a joke. So, you were supposed to laugh at funny jokes. But that joke wasn't funny. Fuck you motherfucker. That was when Gato woke up. He stared at the two shinobi in his bedroom, and immediately ran to the fire escape. Except it wasn't really running. He was kind of waddling like a penguin, the big fat ass tyrant. Naruto was so focused on the A-rank Nukenon in front of him, he didn't notice. Raiga charged at Naruto swinging his two twin blades, Kiba. Naruto hefted his katana, and deflected the two blades. He then formed twenty shadow clones without signs. The swordsman's eyes widened as he saw solid clones. Interesting. He muttered. He rapidly performed hand seals, and yelled, Karigakur no jutsu, art of hidden mist. A thick mist permeated the air, and Naruto couldn't see a foot in front of him. He felt his clones dying, and he hastily formed hand seals. Futon. Daitapa, wind style. Great breakthrough. Suddenly, the mist disappeared, and Naruto saw that Raiga was fighting his last five clones. Naruto smiled and performed the new jutsu that Itachi had taught him. Katsu. He said, and the clones exploded, sending Raiga crashing into the wall, where he turned into a water. A water clone. The real Raiga shot in, and sliced at Naruto with his swords. Naruto twisted to the side and managed to dodge. He used the wall as push-off, and charged at Raiga, forming shadow clones. The clones yelled, Shunshin no Jutsu, body flicker technique, and charged at Raiga from all sides. Raiga kicked out at one of them, smirking, which turned to a frown. The clone used Orochimaru's hubby style to good use, and twisted out of the kick like a cobra, and headbutted Raiga. As the man fell back, another clone kicked him in the back. As he was sent into the air, one clone shouted, Kaden. Gukyaku no Jutsu, Fire Style, no da, Grand Fireball Technique, and another yelled, Futon, Ka. Meidachi no Jutsu, Wind Style, Wind Scythe Technique. The resulting fireball was as big as Tsunade's boobs. Raiga used the bird sign, and yelled, Sweden, Swiryuden, Water Style, Water Dragon Missile. Unfortunately for Raiga, a simple water technique can't stop a fire jutsu powered by a wind jutsu, and he got burned to bits. As a last resort, he threw several shuriken at Naruto, and to his surprise, they all hit him. Then, Naruto turned into a bunch of crows. Outside, the real Naruto picked up Gato's head, and waved it to the citizens of Wave. Again, he did not notice Sharingan no Kakashi. The ninja smiled for the first time since Godaim Hokage had taken power, and resolved to rescue his sensei's son. Zetsu took the news of Naruto's success to MT. Akatsuki and Naruto began the journey home. However, his journey was cut short when a team of four ninja jumped in front of him. Directly in front of him was a man with silver hair, fingering a kanai. His headband covered his left eye, and engraved on the headband was the leaf of Konoha. On his right was a man with a black bowl cut, and caterpillars no weight, thick bushy eyebrows on his forehead. On the left side of the cyclops was a man who was smoking, and had a jagged beard. Behind the cyclops was a pretty woman, with red eyes, and black hair. Naruto tensed. He didn't know about the other two, but he knew that the cyclops was an S-rank junin. Feared throughout the shinobi world as Sharingan no Kakashi, or copy ninja Hitaki Kakashi, the man who had copied a thousand jutsu. The eyebrow monster was made a guy, known as Konoha's noble blue beast. He had an S-rank rating as well, because he was a boss. But his most dangerous weapon, was his eyebrows. Naruto thought to himself what the fuck are these leaf ninja doing here? As if he had heard him talk. Guy said, we are here to restore your youth by taking you back to Konoha, where you contend your diminishing flames of youth. What, what Guy means is that you, Uzumaki Naruto, will be returning to Konoha with us, offered Kakashi. Naruto will not be going with you, said a voice behind them. Behind Naruto were two men in black cloaks with red clouds. Kakashi's eyes widened, as he recognized one of them as an S-rank Nukenon from Konoha. Itachi, Uchiha, 
Next to him was a shark-like man, and if he was correct, that man was one of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist. Kismet Hoshigaki, retreat, yelled Kakashi, and his team sprang back. It was in vain however, as Itachi dashed forward, stabbing the other man, and Kisame sliced off the woman's head. However, at their deaths, Guy roared in rage, and forgot about Kakashi's orders. Eight inner gates, open. Seventh gate, gate of shock. However, before he could finish his power up, Naruto placed a seal on him. It was a suppression seal, Kakashi noted. Few in Konoha could fix that. He picked up Guy, and began charging away. Naruto made to chase after him, but Itachi stopped him. Let him go, he will. Tell Konoha that they should not mess with us. Yeah Konoha, don't fuck with us, screamed Kisame defiantly. They headed back to MT. Akatsuki, meanwhile, back in Konoha. The Hokage will see you now, said Kaharu. Kakashi stumbled into the door to talk to Godime Hokage, who had taken over after Sandame had gotten killed by that creepy orange guy with random piercings for no fucking reason. Godime Hokage was just, downright creepy. He had one eye, one arm, and a weird scar on his chin. He hid it well, but you could see the pain in his eyes, pain he had experienced in the first ninja world war. He had lost his sensei. Lord Tobarama Senju, he had no family at all to live with. In some ways, he was like Kakashi, who had lost his two best friends in the third shinobi world war, and his sensei Lord Minato Kamikaze, who had died defeating the nine-tailed demon fox. Kakashi, asked the Hokage, what happened, where's your team? Kakashi bowed, Hokage-sama, my team was severely defeated. We encountered two Akatsuki members, who intercepted us before we could take Uzumaki Naruto. Kurinai and Asuma were killed, and the boy put a suppression seal on Guy. He is in the hospital, and Rai. T now can't use any chakra for his taijutsu attacks. So, the legacy of Yandaimi Hokage-sama fought against our village. Let's put him down as a new cannon. Kakashi, what would you say his rank in the bingo book would be? I'd say low A rank, sir. Very well, update the bingo book. I will give a personal order for his capture. Counselor Homura, please bring me a pen to sign the order. The Hokage took the scroll, and wrote in neat kanji, his name. Lord Danzo Shimura, treachery, bombers, and a birthday party. At Akatsuki headquarters, there was an uproar at the fact that Naruto had wrecked Gato and friends and at the same time had managed to move fast enough to constrain Maida Guy. Unbelievable, screamed Conan. How the fuck did you not faint at the sight of the caterpillars on his face? How in the name of the boobs of Tsunade did you hurt Gato? He's fatter than an Akamichi. Shouldn't your attacks have bounced off him? Yelled Pain. How did none of you notice that Naruto's not here? Asked Sasori. He isn't. Asked Kisame as he looked around. What's going on? Asked Itachi as he returned from the bathroom. Naruto's missing. Replied Pain, worry clouding his face. Ah, Naruto, I was not expecting you here. Kukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukuk
and kicked him in the testes. Orochimaru fell to the ground whimpering in pain, gripping his balls. H how did you know where the testes were? Kukukukukukukukukuku. I used my sharingan. By the way everyone, he's a boy. Except his penis is so small, the Bayakugan would not be able to detect it. Orochimaru hissed at Itachi. Then, pain popped into the room, and roared, Orochimaru. You hurt my family, now pay the price. Shinra Tensai. Orochimaru went flying through the ceiling, and kept going, until all anyone could see was a glint. Now that that fucking snake bastard is gone, we need someone else to be your partner, Sasori, said Pain. Zetsu cleared his throat. I've found an S rank new cannon from Iwagakur. He has the Keke Genke of blast release. But from what I know, he wants to live alone. Perhaps we could persuade him, said Pain. Itachi, Naruto, Kisame, Sasori. I want you four to go and get this new cannon. So this is the place, muttered Sasori. Let's enter, said Kisame. The foursome walked into the random old shrine, and saw a bunch of weird white things. Some were shaped like birds, and others like fish. There was even one spider. In the middle of a LL this was a blonde man with a badass ponytail thing, I don't know anything about hairstyles, so sorry if it isn't a ponytail. Who the fuck are you, yeah, screamed the man. Itachi nominated himself as the speaker. We are from Akatsuki and we want to recruit you because of your skills. Forget it. Didera works alone, yeah. Because you have no friends. Asked Itachi. Ooh roasted. Screamed Sasori as he kept reading Ika Ika. Didera turned bright red. Why can't you guys just leave me alone? All I want to do is live by myself blowing up shit. Yeah. Itachi intervened. How about this? You fight Naruto over here and win. We will leave you to be a loner. If Naruto wins, then you join Akatsuki. Didera pondered the offer, and said, I'll fight him. He'll get wrecked. Yeah, Kisame said, the rules are that however gets incapacitated first loses. Try not to kill each other. Let's go. Yeah, Itachi screamed at the top of his lungs, motherfucking begin. Naruto, and Didera carefully studied each other. Despite Didera pretending to be an idiot, he knew Naruto must have been powerful, if he was fighting him. Naruto knew that as Didera was an S rank new cannon, he was extremely powerful. Blast release, huh? Naruto thought to himself. Spending a few years with Itachi learning ninjutsu had also included being taught about different keke genke. Naruto knew that blast release was created by combining Raiden, lightning techniques, and Doden, earth techniques. Luckily, Naruto knew futon, wind style, and Raiden techniques that could help him counter Didara's keke genke. The two stared at each other for a moment, then they both exploded into action. Didera shot forth twenty explosive birds, screaming, Art is a fucking explosion bitches. As Naruto formed two shadow clones, they both went through a set of hand seals, and one doppelganger yelled, Futon, Daitapa, wind style, great breakthrough, sending the bombs back towards their owner. The O, oh, their doppelganger formed a personalized version of the lightning armor, and charged at Didera, who didn't move. The birds exploded, but Didera was gone. Then all of a sudden, the new cannon popped out behind the real Naruto, and tried to stab him, only to see his kunai pass through Naruto. Genjutsu, realized Didera, that was when Naruto body flickered in front of his fellow blonde, and kicked him. Didera turned into clay, and Naruto realized he had made a mistake, as the real Didera was somewhere else. Now, a bunch of clay monster things charged at Naruto, and he was forced to battle them. He formed shadow clones, which charged at the monsters, and performed Bunshin Debakua, doppelganger explosion. The clay monsters were unaffected, and Naruto realized that they were not explosive. H. E. Ran Futon, wind style, chakra through his blade, and began chopping the monsters in half. He saw the real Didera a few hundred meters away, and body flickered towards him. You lose, said Naruto, as he put his blade to Didara's neck. The fight is over, said Itachi. You lost, so you must join Akatsuki. Fuck, yeah. A few years later, Uruka Yumino called out the next team at Ninja Academy. Uchiha Sasuke, Haruno Sakura, and Serutobi Konohamaru. Your Jonin instructor will be Hitaki Kakashi. For once, Kakashi was on time. He looked over his team. 
the last Uchiha, the stupid fangirl, and the Sarutobi clan's prodigy, who had graduated at eight. Konohamaru was glad he had gotten such a powerful sensei. He would train hard and take revenge on the man who had killed his grandfather, Sandame Hokage. That I swear, on the will of fire, said Konohamaru, as he looked up at the mountain with the Hokage's faces carved on it. Well, said Pain, happy twelfth birthday Naruto, Conan said, we are going to be giving you your presents now. Here you go. Conan gave Naruto the Horishin scroll, and Pain gave him the Rasengan scroll. Kakuzu gave him Zabaza's head, and his sword, Kukurabaucho. Itachi handed Naruto a summoning scroll for crows, and Kisame gave him one for sharks. Sasori gave Naruto a puppet he had made himself, and Didera gave him bombs he could explode by himself. Zetsu made fifty different types of ramen, which Naruto began devouring. Pain cleared his throat, and began telling a secret. Naruto. Twelve years ago, the nine-tailed demon fox attacked the village hidden in the motherfucking leaf. One man, the Yandaimi Hokage asshole defeated the fox. But he didn't kill it like everyone. Thought. He sealed it away into a newborn child. That child was you. You were the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi. And the son of Konoha's yellow flash. Talking with Kurama and new summons. Bruh. Screamed Naruto. Why would the fourth seal a monster into his own son? Naruto. I don't know of the his reasons. We found you next to his dead body when the seal was still young. So, said Pain, I think it is time you met your tenant. Um, dot how, close your eyes, instructed Conan. T-R, why and feel inside you for chakra that's not yours. Naruto closed his eyes and began looking for chakra other than his. He suddenly was teleported inside his head to a comfortable lounge, where, a giant fox was playing Halo. Yes, that was what was happening. The nine-tailed demon fox, the strongest biju in the world was playing motherfucking Halo. The giant fox suddenly noticed his Jinchuriki. Yo, what's up, dog? For a moment, Naruto lay there stunned, then he asked, you're a gamer. Yup, that's kind of weird if you think about it. Then, the Kayubi began ranting, Gyuki has identity crisis, Chomei is narcissistic. Saiken is perverted, Kokuo is on drugs. Here, Naruto interjected. How do you know he's on drugs? Naruto just stood there with his mouth wide open. Then why did you attack the hidden leaf? For the first time, the Kayubi looked angry. A long time, back in the time of Hashirama Senju, a man named Madara Uchiha made a deal with me. He said that he wanted to play a match of Mortal Kombat against me. If I won, he would leave me alone, and if I lost, I would be under his power for a year. The fucking cheating bitch turned on his Sharingan and knew exactly what I was going to do, and I lost. Since there was nothing about Sharingan in the rules, I was obliged to do his bidding. The second time, I forbid Sharingan, but he used his Mangeku, and then he won again. As your tailed beast, I just ask for one thing. If he meet Madara Uchiha, we will fuck that piece of shit up, and he will get the punishment he rightly deserves. Naruto suddenly changed the topic. So, what's your name? The fox sat up. My name is Kurama, motherfucker. Now if you will excuse me, I have a game to play. Kurama turned back and continue his game. In his office, Danzo Shimura screamed loudly, fuck. He had been beaten once again on Halo, by a user known as, Kurama. He quickly took a deep breath. The doctor had said that he had high blood pressure, and it was dangerous for him. He quickly closed away Halo. As the two counselors Homura and Kaharu, or whatever their names are, no one cares. Hokage-sama, you wanted to see us. Ah, yes. Danzo smiled evilly. Tell all clan, heads and those with summoning contracts to find a genin to sign their contract. Now, he could find them Akatsuki people, and wreck them. Perhaps, Kurama, was one of them. They were evil criminals, eh? ND anyone who ruined Danzo's fun in Halo was evil. Inoichi, Choza, and Shikaku gathered their children to teach them their summons which were meant to be used in conjunction. Inoichi went first summoning a giant pig. This was a bad idea. As Choji charged at the pig, intent upon eating it. Then, Shikaku summoned a deer, and Choza summoned a butterfly. Unfortunately, their kids were less than happy. Shikamaru was asleep, Choji was screaming, 
Why the fuck do we have butterflies? And Eno was whining. Ew, pigs. I need to be pretty for sexy Sasuke. All three clan heads looked at each other and simultaneously facepalmed. Hiyashi had taken Neji, Hanada, and Hanabi aside to teach them their summoning. He placed his hands on the ground and said in an inside voice, Kuchio's no jutsu. A giant panda popped out. Um, wyi is our C clan S summon AAP panda? Asked Hanada. Hiyashi said, it is because our clan symbol is white and black, and pandas are white and black. Is there a problem? Failure. Hanabi and Neji moved at once, kicking the Hyuga head in the ball's tenkatsu. He collapsed immediately. Don't call her failure. They both screamed. Hanada stared at her cousin mutely. She didn't know he could even scream. Neji turned at Hanada. Hanada, what you just witnessed must never leave this room. You must not tell anyone that I actually care for you. Since I need to maintain my cool facade. Hanada nodded. You see Kiba, Hana. For some of our clan's stronger techniques, we require more dogs and or wolves. Thus, you will be learning how to summon wolves, said Sum in Azuka. Now try it. Yes ma'am, chorused Hana and Kiba. Hana summoned a large black wolf, twice as big as Kuromaru, and Kiba summoned a puppy smaller than Gamakichi. WTF, he screamed. The puppy bit him on the foot, and said, Don't swear dickhead, quote ellipsis quote. Shino's dad Abarame summoned a bunch of insects, praying mantises, bumblebees, mosquitoes. Quote ellipsis quote, quote ellipsis quote, the silence was filled in by two bowl cut people running by. Lee, I am just like you. I can't use ninjutsu or genjutsu. But summoning is easy, because it just requires a lot of chakra. Lee took notes in his notepad. Got it guy sensei. They both proceeded to start summoning turtles. Yes that's it Lee, let the flames of youth consume you, and restore your youth. For the first time in history, members of the Abarame clan showed emotions. Konohamaru's mom Serutobi said, Konohamaru, I'm going to teach you how to summon monkeys. Your grandpa was the only one who could summon the monkey king Enma, but if you persevere, I think you could do it too. Konohamaru nodded, he would do his best to avenge his badass grandpa. Jiraiya thought to himself, Shouldn't Konohamaru's part be longer? Oh well, guess the author was too lazy to figure it out. Tenton looked up. I think the author needs to use, motherfucking, less. Also, he should kill you off. You're a criminal. What do you want anyway? Well, I came to introduce you to someone you admire. Presenting. The one and only Princess Tsunade. The only woman who can satisfy me. Tsunade punched Jiraiya into a tree. So, kid. Your name is Tenten. Tenten, you will be my apprentice. Be prepared to work 24-7. Tenten nodded, trying to hide her joy. She was being trained by Tsunade of the Sanin. Sasuke, you will be learning how to summon dogs. Kakashi, I came here to learn something important, not how to summon ugly canines. Who are weaker than me? They're weaker than you. Then try battling Pakun. Pakun formed a thousand shadow clones, and Sasuke got his ass handed to him. Hey, stop beating up Sasuke-kun, yelled Sakura. Hey, you, pink hair. Sakura turned around to see a white-haired man. You're going to be my apprentice. Kakashi perked up at the sound of the voice. Jiraiya-sama, please sign my copy. Sure thing, copycat. New members, tune an exam, and a battle. So, now people, we will welcome new members to Akatsuki, yelled Pain. First up, Jiraiya of the motherfucking Sanin. Also, Mai and Conan sensei. Hey, why is Conan the only girl in this group? I wanted more women who could join my harem. Shut up you fucking pervert. You don't even have a harem. A. S. Jiraiya was propelled into the dining table, Tsunade walked in. Jiraiya screamed, no one was sure if it was in pain, surprise, or the thought of marrying Tsunade. Tsunade, you're here too. Pain sighed. You too, will be partners. But, first, Tsunade, please heal me. After the healing and the long convoluted explanation, our next member is this fucking religious fanatic. My name is Hidan, and my goal is to kill everyone and sacrifice them to Jashin the Great God. Pain, the Nagato Uzumaki guy all healed and stuff, said, No, I'm God. Die. At that moment, Tsunade bitch slapped Hidan, and he got stuck in the wall. 
screaming about how much he loved pain. Pain said, you are in love with me. No, anyway, our final new member is Uzumaki Naruto. Really, sweet, you will be partners with Didera. Sasori, you and Kakuzu will be partners. Hidan, you are alone, so you can kill people by yourself. Yay, anyway, our goal as Akatsuki is to give the Jinchuriki a better life. They are mistreated in their villages. We must save them. Hidan yelled, can I go on missions to kill people? Ah, uh, sure, you can go to Otogakur and massacre the pedophile and his friends. Team 7, you receive a C rank mission to take this drunk, alcoholic, asshole back to his country and guard him while he makes some stupid bridge. Sasuke scowled, as they set off from the village. Hey, hey, said Tazuna, why do I get a kid with a duck ass hairstyle and a pink banshee fangirl for bodyguards? The only guys who look tough are you, grandpa, and that midget over there. Kakashi face palmed, um, I'm only 25, wow, the ninja world sure puts a lot of strain on its people. Nothing much happened on Team 7's first C rank mission. Konohamaru and Kakashi had a contest to see who could wreck more bandits. Kakashi clearly won. In the ambush, Sasuke tried to do a fireball, but he was so oblivious to everything else that a random bandit hit him on the back of the head, and he was down for the count. Sakura hid somewhere behind a tree screaming for absolutely no reason, instead of protecting Tazuna. Tazuna sighed, and took down three bandits with an enormous hammer. At the house, Inari, training to be a runner raced against Sasuke, and won by two hours. Sakura said Inari cheated, and then Konohamaru told her to shut the fuck up and that Sasuke wasn't so great. Sasuke tried to attack Konohamaru, but he tripped over a chair Konohamaru shoved at him. Kakashi sighed, back home at Konoha, hey, my cute little students, I've nominated you for the Chunin exams. Have fun. Kakashi ran away laughing manically. He could read Ika Ika, with full concentration. The next day, Team 7 entered the Chunin exam place. As they walked up the stairs after even Sakura figured out the obvious GE. Enjutsu which Pakun could break while skateboarding down MT. Everest, a random bowl cut kid came up. It was Mini Guy. I would like to fight against you Konohamaru Serutobi, to test the flames of my youth. Ha, another weakling, smirked Sasuke. Yeah, Sasuke-kun could wreck you, said Sakura. Sasuke charged at Lee ready to use his Uchiha intercepting fist, even thought it was ineffective without the Sharingan. With a quick blur, Lee had launched Sasuke to the other side of the room with one kick. Then, he charged at Konohamaru, who flipped over the kick. Lee then attempted a punch, which Konohamaru sidestepped. Then, Konohamaru tried to spearhand Lee, but Lee grabbed his arm and threw him towards the wall. Konohamaru flipped in midair, and landed on the wall beginning to form some hand signs. Just then, they realized the time, and headed towards the examination room. Lee smiled, he had found a tough opponent. Team 7 noticed the other teams around them. There was Team 10 of Choji, Ino, and Shikamaru, led by Shizune. Then, there was Team 9 of Hinata, Shino, and Kiba, led by Gekko Hayate. Finally, there was Neji, Lee, and Tenten. There were some other teams as well, including a team from Sand. With some weird redhead, a guy trying to be a cat, and a girl who looked like she was thinking of the best way to kill you. The team from Sound had a mummy, a smug-looking goblin, and a smirking girl. After the first exam, Team 7 charged into the forest, with Konohamaru at the lead. They dodged through several animals, but then, as they ran into a clearing, something ambushed them. It was a girl, but Konohamaru knew who it really was. Orochimaru. Ah, it seems the Serutobi prodigy knows my true identity. Kukukukukukukukuku. Konohamaru formed some quick hand seals. He shot a stream of fire into the air, which formed the word, Orochimaru. Orochimaru grimaced. The brat had just signaled to everyone. He needed to finish his work quickly. From his office, Danzo, narrowed his eyes, then smashed through the window. Like a boss, Guy charged out over the treetops, and Jiraiya and Tsunade ran into the forest. The stupid snakefucker needed to be stopped. Danzo snapped down next to Orochimaru, with Jiraiya and Tsunade popping up next. The last to come was Guy. Jiraiya took charge. Genin, leave, 
As the three ninja left, Naruto popped in. Along with S rank missing nin, Itachi Uchiha. Sup Orochimaru. Ah, Naruto kun. Kuku 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 kuku. Itachi stood next to Naruto, glaring at Danzo Shimura. They all stood for a second, seven super ninja. Then, they charged. Orochimaru formed some seals, and yelled. Kuchio's Editense and pure world summoning. Three coffins rose out of the ground, and out came the first three Hokage. Jiraiya yelled, I know this technique. Destroy the heads, and then the souls will be released. I'll take Sensei. Tsunade charged at her grandfather, Hashirama Senju, and Guy screamed, Most youthful Nadaim. I shall be your opponent. Naruto charged at Orochimaru, while Danzo prepared for his fight against Itachi. With the Shodai and Tsunade. Tsunade sighed, even dead. Her grandpa was a tough cookie, lol that makes me sound like some creepy old guy. His punches were sending trees flying. But she wasn't a Sanin for nothing. She jumped out of the way as he attempted to stab her, the blade sailing past her neck. She grabbed his arm, and broke it at the elbow, then. Was sent back flying, as he stamped the ground. She cursed, as she saw the arm already rehealing. Then, the first went on the offensive. He moved fast body flickering around her, as she blocked his attacks. Then, he cut the tendons in her right arm, and it went limp. She retreated back a little, and quickly healed herself. Then, she yelled, Tsuchi Bunshin no Jutsu Earth Doppelganger Technique. One clone punched him in the stomach, disrupting his nerve signals, and while he was disoriented, the other two grabbed him. She charged forwards as he used Mokudan to destroy the clones, and as he got free, she kicked his head off, and hit it with an exploding kanai in midair. One down, with Nadaim and Guy. Guy was enjoying his battle with the Nadaim. Sweden, Swiryudan no Jutsu, water style. Water dragon, a roaring dragon charged at Guy. He dodged, but it followed him, because of the Nadaim's excellent water manipulation. Finally, Guy let a tree take the impact. Then, the two ninja charged at each other. The Nadaim was fast, giving no time for Guy to counterattack. Guy ducked under a kick, then narrowly dodged a headbutt. Unfortunately, the old Hokage grabbed him, and tossed him at a tree. Then, he charged slicing through the tree with a sword. Guy sprang back, realizing he needed to open the gates. He roared and opened three of the eight inner gates. He was flooded with power, and kicked the Nadaim, who turned into a log. But Guy then hit the man with a vicious uppercut, sending him soaring into the air. As he jumped up, the man teleported behind Guy, and kicked him into a tree. The green beast nimbly pushed off a tree, and pulled of the Horatian tag on his back. This time, he was ready. As the Nadaim teleported, Guy grabbed his arm, and forward lotused him into the ground, shattering his back. Swiftly cutting of his head, it was kicked into the sun. Two down. Battle. As Jiraiya stared at his old sensei, he knew this wouldn't be an easy fight. Orochimaru had been unable to summon the first and second at full power, since he did not have enough chakra for that. However, he did have enough to summon the third Hokage at full power. Jiraiya knew firsthand how powerful his sensei was. He suddenly remembered his bell test. My name is Senju Tsunade, granddaughter of Senju Hashirama. I like gambling and playing with my younger brother. I hate perverts, and my hobbies are learning medical ninjutsu. My goal is to one day save lots of people as a medic. The Hokage was a bit worried about how a six-year-old knew about perverts and gambling. Still, they were ninja. So yeah, my name is Orochimaru. I like training and I hate people who are lazy. Somewhere nearby, Shikamaru's grandfather sneezed in the face of one of his genin. My hobbies are training and learning, and my goal is to learn all the jutsu in the world. Oh well. Anyway, you guys. I have two bells here, meaning the one person who doesn't get a bell goes back to the academy. It starts now. Orochimaru and Tsunade hid, but Jiraiya, who had IQ levels resembling a boiled carrot charged directly at the strongest ninja in the village, screaming about an honorable fight. The Hokage mentally face-palmed. As Jiraiya tried to punch him, he ducked, and rolled out of the way of a sudden leg swipe. Then, Jiraiya attempted to stab him, but the professor, backfisted him, sending him flying. Then, the man suddenly body flickered right in front of the future Sanin, kicked him, and he went soaring into a tree. 
Jiraiya ran back towards the forest, and there in a clearing, he found a bell. He smirked, and went for the bell, failing to notice the trip wires. All of a sudden, trees fell around him in a barrier. There was no way he could escape. After, a while, someone punched through the barrier. It was Tsunade, and next to her was Orochimaru. Jiraiya, we need to work together. Hissed Orochimaru, there is no kukukukukukukuku, because he is not an evil motherfucker yet. Tsunade then said, this guy is super strong, and there's no way we can beat him by ourselves. Only together can we win. The goal is teamwork. After a bit of arguing, the three sneaked towards the village leader. They didn't notice him smile as he sensed them. All three of them suddenly charged, with Jiraiya shooting a fireball, and Orochimaru sending a wind-style breakthrough making a fire planet. The man quickly sealed the fire away, but then he was unable to see Tsunade through the smoke. She smashed the ground with her finger, and the Hokage fell into the ground. So, old man, we win, yelled Orochimaru, just kidding. It was Jiraiya. Not quite. The man exploded revealing he was a shadow doppelganger, and as the three jumped back, the real Hokage moved at full speed, tying them all up. I win, but, you pass the test of teamwork. Their sensei's words did not reach them at first, as they were awestruck by his speed. Jiraiya sighed, he could not use his summons, as they were too big. In such an enclosed space, he realized the old man was beginning to make the seals for summoning, so Jiraiya charged forward, attempting a kick at the man's head. The man dodged, but Jiraiya had gotten a bit smarter, so his uppercut propelled the man into the air. Not giving his time to escape, he shot two kanai at the old Hokage. However, the man knocked them aside, A. N.D. yelled. Shuriken cage bunshin no jutsu, shuriken shadow doppelganger technique, a thousand shrunken shot towards Jiraiya. The mighty Sanin formed two quick seals, and formed a mud wall, which stopped the shuriken. Then, a bow staff. Shattered the wall, and Jiraiya nearly got it stuffed down his throat. The two now engaged in a battle of taijutsu. The old Hokage swung his bow staff, and Jiraiya ducked trying to spearhead the man in the neck. Hiruzen sidestepped, and kicked Jiraiya in the chest. Jiraiya threw a kanai at the aged man, hitting him in the neck, then he formed several shadow clones. Hiding behind a tree, he began sage mode. Meanwhile, Hiruzen was fighting the clones. He shot a fireball killing three, leaving two. The god of shinobi then in a show of speed kicked the two shadow clones in the back. As they dissipated into smoke, he charged at Jiraiya. But, Jiraiya was ready with his senjutsu. He kicked Hiruzen, and jumped into the air. He then performed a jutsu invented by his student, Odama Rassengan, Giant Rasengan. The old man was pretty much vaporized. Then, Jiraiya saw the Hokage's soul come out of the body. It beckoned to him, and whispered something in his ear. Jiraiya's eyes widened. Impossible. Naruto stared down the evil pedophile. Even though he must have been low on chakra, he was still a sanin, and not to be underestimated. Kukukukukukukuku, Naruto, I would like to see your improvement, and then make you my host. Kukukukukukukukuku, Orochimaru, you still sound as retarded as ever. Orochimaru screamed and attacked. Naruto was forced back, as the sanin began a fast flurry of taijutsu. It was difficult to dodge, and Naruto was unable to retaliate. Suddenly, the snake sage kicked Naruto and sending him flying with a wind jutsu. Naruto quickly formed shadow clones, and shoved Didara's bombs into their shirts. They charged at Orochimaru screaming, for ramen. They exploded next to the pedophile, who turned into mud. A mud clone. The real Orochimaru popped out from a tree, and grabbed Naruto with pythons. Coming from his mouth was a sword. Then, suddenly, red chakra flared out, and shattered the sword. Luckily, for Orochimaru, it was his second best sword. He had hired some random guy to polish his kusanagi, and it was back in Odoviker. The python suddenly shriveled up. Inside Naruto's stomach, the Kayubi was delirious. He had won at some random game, and had unleashed his chakra, to show off. Outside, Orochimaru thought that Naruto could control the Kayubi's power, and he ran away. Danzo was pretty sure he would die any second. Itachi was slicing at him with a sword, laughing manically. Danzo was running around, screaming. 
He kept trying to hit the Uchiha with branches, but Itachi just chopped them in half. Danzo finally jumped on a tree, and used his wind blades. Itachi leapt backwards, and dodged the blades. He then kicked Danzo in the chest. Then, both of them made the same sings. Kuchio's no jutsu, art of summoning. A massive crow named Hiroki popped up under Itachi, while Boro the elephant was next to Danzo. So, Itachi, you're robbing pyramids now. Who is this mummy? Shut up Hiroki. This is Danzo Shimura. Itachi, I think you got his name wrong. It's Dango Shikamaru. Whatever. We are going to kill him. Why? He got my clan killed. That was enough talk, and the duo soared into the sky. Danzo shot a fireball, which Boro maximized with a wind blast. Hiroki just dodged. The bad guys shot a stream of fire, which chased Itachi and friends around the sky. They continuously spiraled downwards. Finally, they dive-bombed Danzo. Itachi then used Amaterasu. Danzo used the Koto Amatsuki to escape, but now he was out of chakra. He then found Itachi's sword in his stomach, and collapsed. Finally, he was dead. The five ninja, Tsunade, Jiraiya, Naruto, Gai, and Itachi now talked. Who's going to be Hokage now? Asked Naruto. More importantly, how are we going to cover this up? Asked Tsunade. Well, let me deal with that. Jiraiya said, I have proof that Danzo is a traitor. My spies have found him plotting the death of Minato with Orochimaru. In addition, Sensei told me that Danzo killed him. Everyone was shocked. Finally, Itachi asked, How? Didn't everyone say it was the Kyubi? The truth is that, Sandame Sama had been shot into a building. Danzo had been spying, and popped up and killed Sensei. Anyway, who will be Hokage? asked Tsunade. Sensei also told me about a possible candidate. All five of us will need to convince him. Who is this guy? asked Homura and Kaharu. Hiruzen's trusted counselors. You'll see, the seven ninja, had reached a house at the top of a mountain. There was a small cottage. Jiraiya knocked on the door. A gruff-looking man opened. What do you owe Hai Kaharu? Hai Homura, Kagame, Kagame, Shisui's grandfather, who the hell are these other guys? Jiraiya stepped in. This is Itachi, that's Naruto, that's Tsunade, and I'm Jiraiya. Let me get to the point. Kagame Uchiha, do you accept the position of Rokudaim Hokage? Okami, Kokuo, the five tails, was gone to buy drugs. He went into the alleyway, and could hear his seller. My precious SSSSSSSSSS. We wants my precious SSSSS. Smeagol wants it. Thief. Thief. Baggins. We hates it forever. Kokuo was a bit confused. Gollum wasn't usually this insane. Suddenly, he was mugged. Gollum took the money and booked a train for the Shire. Little did he know that he was in the wrong universe. Sorry, that it took so long. I've been really busy with exams and tests. Hope you enjoyed. Tune in exam time. Um, isn't Danzo Hokage? He was. Said Jiraiya. Now he's dead, and we have evidence that he's a traitor. He's responsible for the death of Sandame Sama and was plotting with Orochimaru to assassinate Minato. Um, fine I'll be Hokage. First, I'll talk to the young Uchiha. Good day. Afterwards, there was a ceremony, in which Kagame was made Hokage, Itachi's name was cleared. And the Akatsuki become closely linked with Konoha. Since it is all boring politics, we will not discuss it in full. The annoying voice of Ibiki droned on. Now, you see these towers. Each team will have to protect one tower. The objective is to destroy other towers and protect your own. Three hours. Have fun. If your tower still stands, you go on to the third part of the exam. No killing people, please. Or else I'll have to fill out all those stupid forms. Sasuke stood next to his tower with his team, brooding over what Itachi had told him. I did it because our family were traitors. Sasuke stood there in shock. His bro had told him that he had done it to test himself. Now he found out that his brother had done it to stop a great threat to the village. Father was plotting to kill Danzo, and put himself in his place. As Hokage, most of the Uchiha were with him as well. I needed to stop it, so I spied on our clan for Konoha. Then I killed them, but I wasn't alone, there was someone else helping me. Uchiha Madara, Sasuke be careful, he'll try to involve you in his plans. 
Sasuke tried to ask Itachi who this Madara guy was, but his brother swiftly changed the topic. They started talking about school, but Sasuke avoided all his questions. He wasn't about to talk with his mother's murderer so casually, so soon. Konohamaru too was brooding. He had had a talk with Jiraiya the other day. The Sanin had captured him and taken him to a large bushy tree, which was conveniently placed so that he could look into an onsen. Kid, you're not the only one who lost a loved one when the old man died. I was his student, and he was one of the greatest shinobi I ever knew. In a way, it's worse for me. I knew him longer. You weren't even born when he died. What I'm trying to say here is to not get bogged down with revenge. He would want you to live life to the fullest. How Jiraiya had managed to give such a serious lecture while giggling privately was beyond Konohamaru's comprehension. The two shinobi were brought back to attention by Ibiki screaming, Begin! Konohamaru gave his team a quick plan. You guys will defend, and I will attack. Konohamaru charged forward towards a sand team. It wasn't the redhead's team, he had sensed bloodlust coming from, and he doubted he could take the redhead by himself, let alone his team. The sand team had left one ninja guard their tower. He sneered at Konohamaru, expecting him to be a weakling. Come on, midget, since you're so small, I'll let you get the first hit. Konohamaru smirked inside, he then ran, pretending to stumble occasionally, to look like a clueless genin. At the last moment, he flipped himself, kicked the tower down, and then kicked the genin on the back of the head. The clueless genin said, Ow, you're a fucking jerk, bitch. Then, he fell over. Meanwhile, the tower fell over, on the genin. On the other side of the field, Neji knocked out some unimportant ninja, while Lee kicked the tower across the whole of fire country. Screaming about youth, Tenten, randomly stabbed someone with a spear. Gara was just crushing random people with sand. Tamari was hitting Konkuro on his cat head with her fan. Shoj, I was beating the crap out of some guy who had called him fat. Shikamaru was sleeping next to his tower. Ino and Sakura were screaming about who Sasuke like more. Sasuke was resisting the urge to murder both banshees. Shino was just standing there and Hinata was just like confused. Kiba was screaming randomly with Akamaru biting some random cat loving guy. Dosu was laughing for no reason, and Zaku was trying to hit on Kin. Kabuto was pushing up his glasses with his middle finger. His two teammates were just slapping people for fun. Ibiki face pong. In the end, the only teams left were Zaku's, Sasuke's, Ino's, Shino's, Neji's, Gara's, and Kabuto's. Ibiki glared at Gara. I hate you, you fucking asshole. Thanks to you, I have to fill out about 600 forms, you bitch. Gara just ignored him. After Ibiki finished his rant by kicking some trees and throwing some random chunin into a rock, he began explaining the third part of the exam. Okay. You will have lunch, and then we will begin the third part. Is there anyone who wants to quit? Kabuto raised his hand. Okay, four eyes over there. I expected this, you look like some geek. Kabuto made a mental note to kill Ibiki later. After half an hour of coughing, Hayate began explaining the third exam, you're going to have bouts. You can kill people, because I don't have to fill out forms, Ibiki does. You can surrender if you're a wimp. First fight. Uchiha Sasuke vs. Yoroi. The two combatants stepped down to the arena. Hey, little Genin, you're going to lose. Rage boiled in Sasuke. His murdering brother had just returned and had said, Oh I was just being loyal, and now this fucktard was mocking him. As Yoroi charged at him, his eyes changed. Yoroi was now running slower than Sakura, and Sasuke knew that he would punch with his left hand. He could also see the chakra in Yoroi's hand and knew he couldn't block it. So, he ducked, and kicked Yoroi, right in the gut. Ooh, was Yoroi's intellectual response. Um, well that was quick, and really boring. Well at least I got money for my bet, said Hayate, next fight is Hinata vs Ino. Sakura smirked, she could beat Ino, the little weakling, and impress Sasuke. Ino knew she could bet Sakura, but wanted to humiliate her. The two Kunoichi charged at each other. Sakura kicked Ino in the leg, and Ino bent over in pain. She punched Sakura in the gut, and Sakura pulled her down to the ground. The two began rolling around on the ground screaming randomly. Sasuke is mine. No, he is mine, 
you obese forehead fool. Fuck off, pig. A loud crash was heard, as blood from Kakashi's nose propelled him out of the arena. Jiraiya leaned in to get a closer look, and Konohamaru, accidentally, pushed him. The Sanin fell on Hayate, and kicked some random chunin in the face. Hayate screamed, and started pulling out fifty different swords, and tried to massacre Jiraiya. You fucking idiots, take this outside. No, Jiraiya leave, Hayate stay inside you worthless referee. I'll burn all your swords in front of you, yelled Kagame. Meanwhile, Ino and Sakura had gotten away from each other, but Sakura tripped and fell on one of Hayate's swords, bending it. You big bitch useless fangirl, roared Hayate picking up a sword. As he pulled back to stab Sakura, he hit Jiraiya in the face with the hilt, causing him to fill and kick a sword between Hayate's legs. Nutmeg, yelled Kiba. The sword caused Sakura to stumble, and she stepped on more of Hayate's swords. WTF how dare you desecrate my swords with your feet. Ino suddenly tackled Sakura from behind, and pulled her hair. She then tried to punch Sakura, who ducked, and the punch landed on Hayate, who fell on top of Jiraiya. Sakura grabbed Ino by the legs and tried to pick her up, but fell over, and Ino accidentally head-butted Hayate. Stop this unyouthful behavior, yelled Guy, jumping towards the fight. He kicked Jiraiya in the face, and the old sage fell into the stands. Konkuro began laughing, and in annoyance Gara slapped him with the sand, sending him towards Kagame. Kagame picked up a chunin and hit Konkuro towards the fight. Home run, bitches, yelled Kagame. Konkuro landed on Ino's stomach, and she screamed, pervert. Rock Lee and Guy simultaneously kicked Konkuro, screaming about stopping unyouthful behavior. Kakashi returned from his blood ballon, and landed right in the middle of the fight on Hayate and Jiraiya. Ow you fucking retard. Kagame meanwhile smiled at the betting counter guy, and said, give me a billion Ryo please. Holy shit, yelled the betting guy, I can, T believe your prediction about this stuff happening was right. Kagame smiled, well no one knows about my Mangeku Sharingan's special ability, seeing the future. Omake, Conan waved a piece of paper excitedly. Look Didera, I found a university for you. It's in a different universe, but who gives a shit? Read it. The paper read, the Allied Shinobi University offers a wide range of intriguing courses and activities. Led by professional staff, psychology, Inoichi, Ino, biology, Tsunade, Orochimaru, Kabuto, Shizune, Sakura, Ino Chemistry, Tsunade. Physics. Who gives a fuck? Pain does. Math. Udon, Moegi Art, Sai, Didera Clubs, Kendo, Manjetsu, Suigetsu, Zabuza, Kisame, Raiga, Hayate, Killer B, Itachi, Sasuke, Rakuto Sage of the Six Paths. Puppetry, Sasori, Konkuro, Chio Gardening, Hashirama, Martial Arts, Gai, Lee, Neji, Girl Watching, Jiraiya, Kakashi, Ebisu, Uruka Boy Watching, Sakura. Food, Choji, Choza. Strategy Games. Shikamaru, Shikaku Smoking and Other Drugs. Asuma, Five Tails Gaming. Kurama, Danzo. Necromancy. Hidan Entomology. Shino, Shino's Dad. The End. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.